Now we move on to the second reading, which is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2. And the, the selection of the text is chapter 2, verses 7 to 9, and then skip down to, to verse 13. I think we're going to look at the ones in between. We've got time. And uh, they round it out. I think the editors, when they're making out the readings for the liturgy, because the principles are, are clear. You know, the gospel sets the tone. The first reading is supposed to throw light on the gospel. And the, the reading in between follows its own rhythm. Every once in a while, all three coincide, as they do this Sunday. This uh, one we're working on now. Uh, so you see, uh, I think that the uh, editors are concerned about time, getting everybody in the parking lot and out of the parking lot in time for the next wave. Well, it's a reality. But my dream would be that the liturgy would be so beautiful that people would expect and want to spend an hour and a half there praising God, sharing the Word, and that there we'd have to have the 9 o'clock Mass and the 11 o'clock Mass and the 1 o'clock Mass so we can get them in and out of the parking lot because they would love to be there. One of the keys is music. Music is the eighth sacrament. And we're far from discovering that. Um, and of course, the other is preaching, which is precisely why I'm here. Uh, so, this week, there is a real uh, coherence between the three readings. Okay. Um, this is our Thessalonians text. Brothers and sisters, we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. You see? Uh, with such affection with you, for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved had you become to us. Now this is quite beautiful, isn't it? You see? Uh, we could, the, if you go back to verse 7, when they skip the first part of it, see, we could have been a weight on you because we're apostles from Christ. Put us up in a nice place, buy our meals. We could have done that. We didn't. We went out and got a job. And then, after working all day, preached all night. So that we could say, you know, that I'm doing this for love of you. And nobody can say, he came here and was a burden. That's Paul's boast, isn't it? I boast. I was a burden to nobody. So he'd go there. And he'd go down to the local tent maker place and get a job and work. So he's saying, you see, that we, we could have been a weight on you as apostles of Christ. But we were like um, little children among you. huh? Uh, and then the text picks up. As a nurse uh, cares for a nursing mother, really, cares for her children. So. That's the way we were like among you, okay? Uh, and then, you see, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. Now, there's a secret there. What does it mean to share ourselves? It doesn't mean we talk about ourselves. We do when we have to. But I mean, is that we're willing to serve Love, smile, support, and uh, stay up late with somebody who needs it. You see, Paul, you see here, he's comparing himself to the nursing mother we just talked about. As a child on his mother's breast, where he said, I'm the mother, and you're at my breast, and I'm caring for you, and that's why you can be at peace. And I'm not caring for you with my own resources, because I don't have any. I'm caring for you with the Lord's resources. And so, you see, um, as a tropo stalpi, her own children, as a nursing mother cares for her own children, 
uh, and so uh, we were we were had such affection that we shared the, the not only the gospel but also ourselves. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery. Now we can't skip over those words. I was working for a living. You recall, I wasn't a burden on anybody. As an apostle, I have a right to be cared for, but I never asserted it. And nobody will take this boast from me. I went in and I preached the gospel free of charge. That's important. There was a time in my priesthood for a while where I worked on construction and drove a school bus. Because I wasn't ministering, I was on a retreat for several months, but I had to eat. And so, and I liked it. Because I used to do both those things. Well, no, I used to work on construction. I never drove a school bus before. Uh, but it was nice to sort of join the human race. Uh, and I appreciated that. And then talking to the kids on the school bus, oh, dear Lord, the shape they were in. I mean, like, oh, confused, angry. Oh. But I could, I'm just the bus driver. They knew I was a priest, but I'm just the bus driver. They would talk to me. Uh, well, that's a distraction. Uh, but you see, that's what he's saying. Our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you, that's how we proclaimed the good news of God. Uh, you see? And uh, we were willing to um, hand over our very lives for you. So, beloved, had you become to us. Um, uh, we treated you as a father treats his children. This is the part we don't have in the text. Um, you see, exhorting and encourage you, encouraging you, insisting that you conduct yourselves as worthy of the God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. How do you exhort people? You tell them if they're sexually promiscuous, they're going to get AIDS? No. You say, look at the God who loves you. Look at what he has in store for you. Get real. You're going to die. What's going to happen then? Here's God the Father with the love of a father beyond what most human beings ever experience in this life. That love of the father. Absolutely and totally reliable. I know this because the Lord showed me. Totally reliable. Always. That doesn't mean I get everything I want. I don't get a lot I want. But I know the Father's love. And so you see, when we know the Father's love, we know what Paul is talking about here, you see. We treated each one of you as a father treats his children, a good father, exhorting and encouraging you, and insisting that you conduct yourself as worthy of the God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Now, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. But you know, uh, there's nothing else as beautiful in this whole world as to care for people like that. There's nothing like it. Because it's the Lord Christ in his great paternal heart, which is the heart of the Father, working in us. And that's how we get to know love. Uh, the heart, the secret, though, you see, is a life of prayer. If we're not in touch with the Lord, we don't understand how truth and tenderness go together. You can be truthful, you've got to shape up, you've got to do this, you got to, or tenderness, oh, a little fornication's okay. You see? How do you get truth and tenderness? You've got to learn it from God the Father. I don't know where, where else you can get it. If your father was like that, that's a good start. You've got to have an idea. But well, we've got to learn it from God the Father. That's what he's saying here, you see. Uh, so you can see that this is a humble apostle. Even when he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. He's not saying, I'm a big shot. You see, he's saying, you see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to imitate Jesus. 
So, join me in that. Imitate me like I'm trying to imitate Jesus. Uh, as a father loves his children. Now, he comes to the important part. And for this reason, <clears throat> <clears throat> We give thanks to God unceasingly that in receiving the word of God from hearing from hearing us, funny translation, you received not a human word, huh? but as it truly is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. The word of God, as we just heard in that uh, passage from Verba Domini, the word of God is not information. It's living, active, transmitting knowledge of God, a living knowledge of God. Ultimately, it's Jesus himself. And so, you see, the word of God is at work in you who believe. You believe the word of God is at work in you. Well, I don't notice it. Well, if you get a half hour prayer a day, you'll start to notice it. And what freedom. My gosh, God is paying attention to me. And I know it. I'm aware that God the Father loves me. Not because he has to love everybody, but because he loves me. That's what sets us free. And that's what Paul is talking about here, you see. Uh, so he can go back and say, look, you know, I was making tents all day and preaching all night. That's how much I love you. And he's not saying that like, look at me, I'm a saint. He's saying, I did this because I know the Father's love. Which is exactly that psalm now. And uh, the indictment against the priests there in the book of Malachi, which is almost the last thing written, uh, you see. And so we have this notion. Um, you see, uh, See, not only the gospel, but our souls as well. That's translated our very selves. It's more than our very selves, it's our soul. That's how beloved you had become to us. Okay. Remember, brothers, the kopos, our work and our fatigue, night and day, working so as not to be a burden to anybody. We preach to you the gospel of God, the good news of God. Not just the gospel. That word, nobody knows what that means anymore. What's the good news of God? You know what the good news of God is? That despite our sinfulness, rebellion, and stupidity, God, the Father, sent his Son to die for us and to bring us to an eternal life with him of unimaginable joy forever. That's the good news. And so, you see, uh, we're all fathers and fam mothers and families have also this obligation to mediate the pure, truthful, gentle, affectionate love of God. It's not easy. People, you know, make you mad. You gotta shut up. If they're wrong, you have to correct them. But you correct them with love. Otherwise, even if they shape up because they're afraid to see you coming, that's not going to help. They must be won over like a weaned child to rest in the arms of God. 